All right, tonight I have Katrina Bellamiza, who is, as of yesterday, yesterday, as of yesterday, they were doing this on a Sunday. So as of Saturday, uh, September eighteenth, she is the strongest bench pressing woman ever. It's exciting. How does that? How does that? Like when people say that, how does that feel? I mean, it hasn't. I mean, it's only been twenty four hours or so. So how does that feel? That like you literally are one of the strongest women in the world. <laughs> it feels crazy because my entire powerlifting career, um, that's all I wanted was one all-time world record. And so for it to finally happen, it just, I, I couldn't even believe it. As I was doing it, as the bench press was going up, I was like, oh my God, I'm doing it. <laughs> Like, I'm going to get this. How is this even happening? So... I know it's probably going to be short-lived. Um, it's a new category, so there's a lot of strong girls out there that haven't put this shirt on yet. Uh. Um, so, I, I mean, this was a last-minute entry for me. I knew so – I went to the gym on Monday and put the shirt on, and I benched 600 to a one board, and it flew. And I was wow. – and I'm actually doing a meet in October uh, in Orlando next month, and I was – I was like, you know what? Get me into a meet right now. Some girl is going to put on the shirt and bench like 800 between now and October. And I'm going to miss out on that window of opportunity to get that record. So I went and, you know, last minute I reached out to uh, my friend, Jamie Mata, who owns a gym up in Vermont, Fairhaven Fitness, and just an awesome human being. And I was like, can you get me into this meet? And it just so happened somebody had dropped out. So mm. we went up to Maine and I actually really fucked up my first two attempts um, and got it on the third. So All right, before we get great. before we get to that, let's let's yeah. What was what was your bench at the meet? Six oh seven point five. Okay, so pounds. six six hundred and seven pounds, point five pounds, and correct. This as of right now, that is the strongest women's bench ever. Ever by two and a half pounds. That's uh, all right. You still broke it. Ray Miller had it before me. Who? Ray Ann Miller. Oh, that's right. Um, Ray Ann Miller had it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and she actually, which I thought was really sweet and pretty classy of her, sent me a message on Instagram, and she was like, "Congratulations." That is. Classy. And I was like, "Your turn. Go ahead and your turn. Go bump it up so that I can go back and try and beat you yeah. again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. So, um, before we get to the actual meet. Uh, tell us about uh, this particular shirt that you're like so into. So it's an F8 um, bench shirt. It's an, it's the new unlimited category. So it's like a it's essentially like a, a banded kind of like a slingshot or a bench daddy type shirt. So it's like it's got a lot of stretch and rebound into it built mm. into the shirt. Okay. So you're able to do a lot more weight than you typically would be able to do. And even, you know, just the regular bench shirt. Okay. So it came from Pharrell Innovations. Um, I reached out to Rob Pharrell probably a couple months ago. Mm. And he was awesome. He took my measurements, sent it to me. It wasn't quite right. I sent it back to him and he had it back to me within a week. That's great. Just in, yeah. Unheard of in powerlifting. Usually you're waiting. Yeah months um okay so just in case there's any new new listeners or new subscribers on youtube and i usually ask this for anybody who is a bench um uh, sure. world, re world record holder describe quickly describe the difference between raw and equipped or shirt as you would say in bench press okay so i, I started in raw and i still compete in raw sometimes raw is basically on your own power um, you can't use any sort of shirt. You're allowed to use wrist wraps, and that's pretty much it. You can't use elbow sleeves or anything else. Um, you have the same – for all three different categories, it's the same commands for bench. You unrack the bar. The judge at a meet will tell you – will say bench. You have to wait for him to say bench. You bring the bar down to your chest. Usually it's a split-second pause when the bar is under control. He'll give you the press command, mm -hmm. he or she. And then you bring the bar up and they give you the rack command and then you can rack it and you get the three attempts. So raw is, oh, my 18 year old okay. just walked in the door. That's okay. um, raw 
is on your own. And then there's single ply and multiply. So there's, and that's when you start using the shirts. So single ply is just one layer of material. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you a little bit more help. A lot of people are able to get a, a lot of um, pounds out of their single ply shirt. Mm -hmm. The more layers you have, the more you power and more help assistance you get from the shirt. I had a single ply shirt for about six months and I wanted to burn it. I was just awful. I hated it and I just mm. never got the, the hang of it. And then the multiply shirt um, is just more layers. So, but the single ply and the multiply shirt, they don't have any stretch. There's no elasticity to them. It's really difficult to, it's almost like a reverse bench. You have to pull the bar down to, to Ooh, your chest. You're wow. pulling it. Wow. So wow. if you don't have enough weight on the bar, forget it. You're only going to be able to move it a couple of inches. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, so then, yeah. and then in um, this new unlimited shirt, it's stretchy. Mm -hmm. So when you bring that bar down, you still have to use all of your back muscles to pull it down into you. Mm -hmm. But once you get it to your chest, it flies off your chest if you get it right into the groove. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, get into the groove you're gonna dump it on your face <laughs> like Ooh. which is what i did on my second attempt oh my god um, it's so strong it's crazy so wow. it's gonna be unbelievable to see over the next year or two what men and women are gonna be able to do my friend bob merck is benching over 1100 pounds now in his that unlimited sure. shirt so yeah, it's crazy I, I, I actually interviewed him um, after. Yeah, that. he's awesome. He really is. He truly, he truly is. Like there are some people that I say it, they're very nice, and I only say it because I kind of have to. But then there <laughs> are. Yeah, I mean, it's true. There, are, I don't want to mention any names, but there's particular bodybuilders and, and particular powerlifters I have interviewed, and I'm like, yeah, he's a nice guy, and it's but in the back of my head, I'm going, he's a real asshole. But Bob Merck is one of those people that was the nicest person. And and we had um, we had uh, for at first we had Wi-Fi issues, and then he's like, uh, "Do you want to reschedule for tomorrow?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know." And we reschedule for tomorrow, no problem, blah blah. And the friendliest, nicest guy, and so on. So really, really, really down to earth, and a sweetheart of a guy, really, truly. Um, I've been very fortunate to meet the best people in powerlifting, more so than even some of my own family members. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. The There's girls, especially, you know, when you're younger and you're like in high school, girls are kind of like catty. Yes. And I find that it can still be like that in powerlifting, but it's almost like the stronger and better you are, the more, the nicer, more humble these girls and men are. It's, it's pretty awesome. That's good. That's definitely good to hear because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy when there is uh, a lot of camaraderie in a sport because um, there's not so much oh yeah, I talked about this with Leah. Um, there's not so much camaraderie in bodybuilding. It's, it's a very selfish sport. And even though you think somebody is your friend, you, you wind up hearing a lot of stuff talking behind your back and so on and so forth and blah, blah, blah. But as the other uh, power sports that I interview, powerlifting and arm wrestling, it it's, doesn't seem to be the norm. Where in bodybuilding, it is it is. But um, all right, so we get, we're getting away from that. Let's um, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a whole gossip thing. I guess you do. Um, so this shirt, you truly believe that when people start using this shirt, numbers are going to just go through the roof. I, I absolutely. I mean, even for me, the meet that I just did. I mean, I've been in this shirt maybe five times mm -hmm. prior to doing this meet mm -hmm. because it's not something that you can do every, at least for me, every week because it's so heavy. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm. A little bit older I'm 41 and I need more recovery time so I really when I got on the platform well yesterday it was almost like I forgot how to bench I forgot how to bring the bar down in this shirt on the first attempt so I messed that up and then I finally I fixed that and then on my second attempt I forgot how to press I was pressing it's a lot of technique and I was reverting back to how I would press in my regular multiply bench shirt. Uh, and that almost dumped it on my face. You can oh. see, I haven't posted the video yet, but thank God for the spotters. Cause it was about this close from my face. It just went 
just oh, like that. So yeah, had I had another attempt, I, I think just by watching the video that I probably am at anywhere between 6.30 and 6.50. Really? And that's just me, you know, and that's without practicing. And these, there's way better raw and equipped benchers than me. So it's honestly just a matter of time before these girls start playing in this shirt and well, it's going to be unreal. As of right now, you are the best. So let's not, let's, let's, let's you know, yeah, <laughs> let, 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 you know, let's give credit or credit is due. As of right now, you are the best. And in powerlifting, I am. Uh, and in powerlifting, you know, and even in the last like five years or so, I would say, maybe five, six years, the breaking of world records has just been like one right after another. And in both men's, mm-hmm. women, and in both, both raw, both equipped, and all, 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 all powerlifting. So I mean like, you know, bench, deadlift, squat, strip curl, just. Yeah, I I definitely, I definitely think that I was somewhat a little bit behind that big growth. So it, because it almost seems like even when I was raw, I was so close to getting a world record in the squat or so Mm -hmm. close to being, getting the world record in the bench. And then somebody would break it like a month before I went and it would be just 20 pounds out of reach and it just kept going up and up and up. So that's why this meant a lot to me because it was like, finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you played it (laughs) smart. You played it smart. You're like, no, 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 I'm ready now. Let's do this now instead of waiting for somebody else to come along. You know, it's like that. Yeah. it's like that line from Rocky Four. Do you remember that? Where uh, Apollo Creed and Rocky are, uh, are talking about who's going to fight Ivan Drago. And, <laughs> and, and, and Sylvester Sloan says to uh, Carl Weathers, you know, do you really want to do this? You know, he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, what if I pull out of this thing right now and somebody, somebody goes in and whips this jump? What does that leave me? And it's right. like, that was kind of like your attitude. No, no, no. I got to go do this now and get in on this now because, you know, if I wait too long, somebody's mm-hmm. going to break this record. Yeah, and maybe it'll be me. Maybe next month in October, I'll break my own record. Now, where in October is it? I know what you said, Orlando, but... Um, It is in Orlando. It's an RPS meet, and I want to say it's on October 23rd. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And um, it all started because Merck wanted to go to... Bob Merck wanted to go to Universal Studios again for the 20th time this year, so (laughs) he uh, (laughs) decided to do a meet down there, and... Uh, invited me in to go with him. So me and oh. my husband, him and his wife are going to go do Universal and break some records. And- that's, that's great. You know what's really funny is that um, me and I booked uh, the Olympia uh, to go to the Olympia Expo, which is in Orlando, in about three weeks. And uh, It's a little, little ways away, a little bit off. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, the only way I'm going to get my wife to come with me to the Olympia is if we go – on a vacation. So I'm like, well, there's universal, right? So we booked universal and Epcot and we're doing that same kind of thing you're doing, you know? Yeah. But that's, uh, that's, yeah, I've never been there and I'm a huge movie buff, like huge, huge movie buff. So I'm like, Oh, it's, I I took, we're getting off topic and you're probably going to edit this out, but I'm just going to tell you that I took my kids there and it was so fun and I loved it. But then I wish my husband had gone with me because I, wanted to like go on more of like the adult rides and stuff yes. that yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't want to go on. So I'm excited to go back with him Good. and, you know, have some drinks and <laughs> yeah. And do it right. And then chill and do like an adult, yeah. Thing, which, yeah, which is what me and my wife are doing. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, fun. I don't, uh, the only thing I really edit out is if something like screws up, like if, if so, like, like if, if one of your kids came in right now and asked you like where my purple socks are and like whatever, then I would, but if we get on a natural, I don't, I don't really edit that out. Or if I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them to do that. Yesterday, <laughs> when I told my daughter that I got the world record bench and that I was the strongest female bencher ever in history, her response to me was that she put everything in the cart that on her phone that she wanted to buy from Hot Topic, and she just needed me to put my credit card information. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, uh, Bella. Yeah. Well, how old are they? I mean, they're in that age where they're in a farm. So 18, 16, and 14. Yeah. That whole so. age range is your head is in the clouds, you know? Yeah. You know, for girls, that's what it is. And then for guys, it's it's basically what you're thinking about as girls, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But um, all right. So let's get back on uh, <laughs> let's get back on powerlifting. Okay. So 
What are your stronger? Obviously, bench is one of your stronger lifts. What's your other? What's your other strong lift? Usually, most uh, powerlifters have like two out of three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So squat is actually more my thing than bench. Okay. Um, my deadlift is okay. It's nowhere near as strong as my squat and my bench press. Mm-hmm. Um, Last year, so the heaviest squat I've ever done is 722 pounds in a, wow. in a meet. Um, last year at the WPO, I got my first attempt attempt squat. And then on my second attempt, I believe it was, well, I don't know what it was. I, I think it was 730 to 740. My coach actually doesn't tell me what's on the bar, really? um, which I like because okay. you have to squat it no matter what. So, yeah, yeah. so I really don't know. But when I was standing up with it, I, my knee kind of mm. shifted mm. and I tore my ACL uh. and tore my meniscus. Uh. So I had surgery. That was in October. I had surgery in November. I was on crutches for two months. I ended up getting some complications. Um, I don't know if you know what deep vein thrombosis is, but like Not at all. it was terrible. My whole leg swelled and I had to be on blood thinners for a few months. And even to today, I just started probably squatting about a month ago and it's going okay, but there's still a lot of pain and I have to be very careful with it. So squat is definitely my thing, mm-hmm. but because I couldn't squat for so long, all I did was bench. For the last okay. nine months, I benched nonstop. It was like bench three, four times a week because that's all I could do. Yeah. Um, so I guess it worked off. out because, yeah. you know, now I have the strongest bench. Yeah, it definitely did work <laughs> out. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, how long have you been powerlifting for? How many years? Uh, I, it's, I think it's been like seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been as long as you know, a lot of the other people that are my age Mm -hmm. that most people started at least and that I know of a lot earlier in life. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't start getting into it until after I had my kids. And, and really the reason why I got into it was because I hired, I had never really worked out. I'd always done, I would run, I would do tons of cardio and lose weight and then stop doing it. I hated it Mm -hmm. and I would gain the weight back. And so I finally hired a personal, a personal trainer at a, um, at a gold's gym and he was a bodybuilder and into powerlifting and had after about six months, I probably lost like 30, 40 pounds. I was chunky and out of weight. And I was like, I want you to teach me how to use all the, all the free weights and teach me how to squat. And I just remember I had maybe a 25 pound plate on each side of the bar And I was squatting and I was like, oh, I said to him, I was like, this is going to be a problem. And he's like, why? I'm like, because I'm not going to want to stop. I'm going to want to keep adding weight. And I kind of knew right then and there that I loved it. And it was the (laughs) first I ever really loved. It's such a part of me. Um, Mm -hmm. It's really hard to explain, but it's just, it's a huge part of my life. I don't know what I would do without it. Yeah. It's your passion. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the fire that burns inside you. And, uh, and you know, what's great is not many people have that people like to think they do, but there's a different, you know, when somebody has it, when somebody doesn't, you know, and, and, right. you know, you, you do people go, Oh, I love my job. No, you know, you're, a, you, know you know what I you mean? You do your job, but exactly, exactly. You know, you don't love you. If you, you know, you know, I hear that, you know, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a executive assistant. Nobody likes sending emails. That's you don't love sending emails. <laughs> right. You know, um, but uh, so you're one of the very few that uh, that truly very lucky, the, yeah. That truly had the passion and obviously had the work ethic and the genetics to actually make it happen, which you did, which is very, very commendable. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, who were the powerlifters that you admired or looked up to or learned from, or, or maybe Googled or YouTube? So when I first started, and I was raw. I looked up to Rita West. Um, she was a 148er, mm-hmm. um, and I was in the same weight class. Um, and I know she she's competed in every freaking weight class and done everything. She's amazing. But She's been on my um, show three times. Oh, my God. She's just like, <laughs> you want to talk about hard work? I mean, I think that 
and not to get again off subject, but someone like her just never stops working. And I think I work hard. I think I work harder than anybody I know, but she works harder than me she by a long level. shot. She brings She's it to just, another level. Yeah. Any a whole, like insane, but um. Anyway, so you know she's she doing had, another. You know she's doing another meet. A powerlifting meet. I interviewed her last week, and she came on, and um, because she's doing bodybuilding now, and she yeah. made she made the announcement that she's returning to powerlifting, in Ooh. I think in December. She said she's just gonna have fun with it, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, but um. Uh, cause she, that's exciting. She, yeah. She, uh, you know, she is an icon in powerlifting, a true icon. So, all right. So, yeah, go ahead. so who so else? Long, so, well, I just wanted to say going, so with her, I, I was always following her. She had a 500 pound squat and that was what I was trying to beat. And then somebody else ended up beating it before I got a chance to beat it. But she was always like one step ahead of me. And mm -hmm. then, um, in this, when I competed, she competed in, um, an APA, APF nationals meet. And that was when I squatted the 722 pounds and she was there and she came up to me and she was like, I can't remember what she said, but it was something like you fucking killed it or something like that. And that was huge to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Laura Phelps, obviously you're going to, I mean, who doesn't love Laura Phelps and she's yeah. the queen of geared lifting and been around forever. Right. Also one of the nicest and sweetest people that I've, I've met. Mm -hmm. um, I think she she's always liking all my stuff on Instagram. Every oh, I mean, great. she does with everybody. Yeah, she's so nice. Um, but yeah, so I'd say Rita West for Raw, and of course Leah. I'm watching her. I mean, she's not. Um, she hasn't been around as long as you know Rita and three years. And, uh, I just but, I just oh my gosh, her. She's, <laughs> she's insane. I know. I know. Insane. I know she's. I don't even understand. She squatted nine twenty five. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, and she's <laughs> and she has more. She's yeah. gonna squat over a thousand. Yeah, she said that's what she's going for. Yeah, that's, that's she's cool. going to. Like I have zero doubt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> why do you think? Like uh, why do you think these records are just being broken after another? Why do you think there's this huge like? This is this is huge merge of powerlifters in the world in in the powerlifting world. Where do you think it came from? To be honest, I think a lot. I mean, I think a lot of people got involved in powerlifting, especially females, because of CrossFit, the popularity of CrossFit back in the day. I'm not talking about right now, but like ten years ten years ago when CrossFit started getting popular, everybody was lifting, and then everybody you know, started getting into powerlifting more. So there, I think that there's just in general, a lot more females competing than mm -hmm. ever before. I mean, there wasn't that many. Yeah. You know, back when all of this started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's just, and then the reason why I think girls are getting so strong is because there's a lot more knowledge. The gear is better. Um, there's more people to learn from. You have teams of girls, you know, comp you know, training together and pushing each other mm -hmm. all the time. So, yeah, and it's it's fantastic because they're they're. I, I, I you're right. I agree, and I think social media is another one. Oh, absolutely, I, social you know, media too. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, and it's I I love seeing because my my whole life, all I've ever really loved, I've always admired strength. I've always admired bodybuilding you know, so on and so forth, whether you're a guy or girl. So when I see the, that world exploding and, and bodybuilding is exploding too, it's, it's, it's kind of like strange. It's like the same time, there's this new crop of talent in both of them just exploding. And um, yeah. uh, it's just, it's, it's great. It really is. It's great for the sport. And um, because it was, it was kind of like quiet for a while, like for a little while, like, uh, Right after, I would say the early two thousands, it was kind. Yeah, of, I can see that. It was kind of quiet, and then I would say about five, six years ago, it exploded again. But it exploded more with raw than it did equipped. But inevitably, yeah, equipped is making its way back a little bit. <laughs> yes. I think. Yeah, I, I was about to say the same thing. Inevitably, equipped is coming back as well. Yeah. The problem with with equipped is that it takes so many people to train. 
and it takes so long. When you're raw, you can go into the gym, you can do your squats on your own, you don't need anybody to help you. Yeah. You can go into a squat rack, do what you need to do, mm -hmm. be in your own little world, and then go home. Right. When you're lifting heavier weights, even raw, when you start putting on wraps even, before you even put on a briefs or a suit, you start needing, well, maybe I want to not walk it out and I want to be in a monolift. So then you need somebody to run the monolift and then you mm. need a spotter and somebody to, you know, help you wrap your knees and then, you know, somebody to help you put your briefs on. And if you're me, somebody to help you get your briefs off because <laughs> mine are like glued onto me and it takes like <laughs> four grown men to get them off um, right, right, right. most of the time. So, and it takes hours, you know, even to bench um, what I'm benching you start with the bar or at least I do and most people do. And then you sure. make incremental jumps. It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the right people around you to teach you and a team that is available to train with you, you, you can't do it. It's almost, it's nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. There's very, I maybe know like two people that train in their garage, you know, in gear that are on their own. Yeah. And I believe Bob is one good. of them. Right. They're not great. So is, is Bob one of them? Uh, he, he has a whole. No, group. Bob has well. Bob trains in his in his basement, but he has a whole team. Oh, okay. Never mind then, because he. Yeah. He, yeah. He but told he me. um, he could do it. I've seen him like he does everything on his own anyway. Yeah. I'm yeah, kind yeah. of a needy. I'm kind of a needy power lifter. If it wasn't for my husband, I, I, I don't know how I would get. Uh, <laughs> Get yeah, so far yeah. because he does everything. I'm like, wrap my knees. I need you to help me put my briefs on. <laughs> I can't find the bar that I need, or somebody has my bar and I want it. So yeah, like, yeah, but that's okay <laughs> though. That's, that's what husbands do. But your husband is a, is is a powerlifter as well, right? He is. Yes, okay. he's actually going to do a meet in uh, what is it? November in New Hampshire. So was was he always a powerlifter, or this was like somewhat somewhat new, like when you started? <laughs> He was a power lifter way before me and, and funny story is that I, um, I kind of, he, he, so we go to, we went to the same gym and before we were actually talking to each other, I wanted to meet him. So I kind of slid into his DMs oh, um, asking, for some, asking for some bench press help. So yesterday he goes, I think my job is done. <laughs> like you're such a jerk. <laughs> that's cute though. <laughs> that's like that. you're such a jerk. Yeah, that's cute though. That's great. That's great. And uh, he, I've seen, you know, some old. He would judge a lot for RPS meets, and there's one video where I was pulling my first 300 pound deadlift, and it was so ugly and awful. And he was judging before we even knew each other, and he was just like had this bored look on his face, and like was eating his food, not even paying attention. So I kind of <laughs> choke with him about that. That's hysterical. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's great though. I, I, you know, it's, it's nice when you have uh, uh, couples that are interested in things together and support each other uh, because inevitably it makes for a successful marriage, you know, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, well, yeah. And then, you know, other times it's like, Oh uh, yeah. I my tensions are high. It's, it's it, it can be a little rough in yeah, the gym yeah <laughs> but we figure it out yeah it's it's um is he your biggest cheerleader oh yeah oh my yeah, god yeah he, yeah he was the one that convinced me to go on saturday and yeah. you know i was like i don't know i can just wait till october he's like no i can take you i'll drive you you know yeah and was there the whole time he does everything so i'm very is, is, is he on the sideline like screaming and like let's go let's get it well, actually, he's the one that's giving me the handoff. So, oh, that's even better. Um, and even for squats and big meets, all he's a big guy. He's like two hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah, and he is the only one that I really trust to spot me. So, because I know that if anything happens to me, you know, he's going to pull me out from underneath that bar. Right, um, right, right, right. And with deadlifts, I have a bad habit of passing out. So I'm, I'm always like looking around right before I start a deadlift attempt in a meet, like, where is he? <laughs> yeah, sure no. That I, and, and that's, that's relatively common. I, uh, Jeannie Nutter said the same thing that she actually passed, you know, she passed out a couple of times. Uh, oh, she's worse than me. Yeah. She passed out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just expected. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. But she's, but she's tiny. She's like, uh, I think she's a 132. And her deadlift is, is insane. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, um, I expect her to, 
I mean, that's a lot of weight to be. Yeah, you know, it's uh because I'm not a I'm not a big guy. Mm -hmm. I'm five eight, two hundred pounds, maybe two or five, like around that. And my whole life, um, I've always admired the smaller guys that lifted a lot of weight or looked so good. Like my growing up, my favorite bodybuilder was uh, Sean Ray because he was smaller than you know, the Ronnie Coleman's and the, and the Gunther's and the Marcus rules, but he was still able to hold his own. You know, he came in the Olympia, uh, he came second. So I've always admired that. But the powerlifting, yeah. I admire it because it's like, you know, when you see a huge person, like when you see a, a, a Julius Maddox or you see a Scott Mendelson, this huge human being, you're like, okay, you can tell, see where the power is coming from. But when you have somebody like a Rita West or a Jeannie Nutter um, or uh, uh, who's the other uh, deadlifter, um, Stephen, Stephen Cohen, yeah, you know, it's like where where does this power come from? You're 120, 130 pounds. You know, 140 pounds. You, where I know. is this coming from? Like when I that doesn't make sense to me. When I interviewed Rita and she told me that she squatted six seventy five at uh, one forty eight, I was like, like yeah, where is it? You're five foot two, one hundred forty eight pounds, and you. You'll, you'll, I don't know. I just think that their muscle fibers must be like super dense or something because yeah, I don't yeah, get it either. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. But you know, like you know, when, but then when I interviewed uh, Leah, I'm like, wow, this wo this woman is a, is a is a phenom, uh, you know. And I'm like, I could see where the power comes from. I'm not taking anything away from her. Obviously, 925 is insane, but you could see right. where the power comes from, right? And it was just always more. And like I said, probably because I was always a small guy, I was never a huge guy. And I always admired like the, the little, the little people, but at the same time, when I see somebody like yourself or somebody like Julius Maddox or Scott Mendelson or Leah, just putting that crazy weight up, it just blows me away. And if, I've been a fan of that since I'm a kid and I'm 45 years old, I'm probably a little bit older. Yeah. I'm a little bit older than you. And I think we come from the same generation of Hulk Hogan, Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, right? yeah. where, where it was just like the guys were just, you know, you went to the gym when we were young. Like when, if you went to the gym when we were like 15, 16, there was only two reasons to go to the gym and that was to get big and strong. There was no, right. there, was, <laughs> there, was, there was no CrossFit. There was either you were bodybuilding or powerlifting. That was it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I would go to the YMCA and I would, I would, walk there because it was only a couple miles from my house and I would use all the machines, you know, like the leg press and the calf raises and all that stuff, you know, never did any of the free weights or squatted because I didn't know how to do any of it. But even then it's, it's funny because I never realized it until I started powerlifting. But even then on the leg press or the calf raises, I still wanted at 13, 14 years old, wanted to, see if I could lift the whole stack on the calf raises yeah, 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 or yeah, yeah, yeah. see how much I could put on the leg press yeah. and push it. Yeah. So yeah. One of my pet peeves, one of my pet peeves is when somebody goes, I hate this. I'm sure you hear it all the time. This, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get big and muscular. So I, I don't like to lift weights. And I'm like, really? You're not, I wouldn't worry about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, 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 right. just, that's just, it's, I'm going to go pretty do intense. it. It's kind of, it's like, what do you think that it was just easy that I just decided? You walked in the door you know, and you decided I'm going to bench 600 pounds. That's what you thought. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just. No, it's not the yeah. way it works. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. So I just go back and do your Zumba class, and <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay, so in October, you are going to break your own world record. I am. I'm. I'm going to be crazy and and open with 610. So. I mean, why go for anything less than what I've already done? And it's just for fun. So if I open with 6.10, then I can maybe make a jump to 6.30, 6.40, maybe even 6.50, and then third attempt, you know, provided I don't screw up royally, I can uh, <laughs> go for something ridiculous. So Well, uh, you'll have a lot more time with that shirt, the new shirt, right? So yeah, be I'll have plenty, so that plenty can, of opportunity what's the, name, what's the name of that shirt again? It's... Uh, it's made by Rob Farrell and it's an F8. F8. Rob so, and Farrell. it's a triple ply. He makes um, double ply and triple ply. And mine was custom made. And I think you can still order them custom made through him, but they're also sold on Anderson Powerlifting now. So mm -hmm. um, you can order it from there. And Anderson they have them in stock. 
to Anderson yep. Powerlifting. Okay. I'm going yeah, to they have a website. It's Anderson with an O, A N D E R S O N, powerlifting.com. Well, I'll make sure that that is in the description. Do you have yeah. any? Do you have any endorsements or anything? Any shout outs? Anything you want to put out there? No, or? I never. You know, I never really um, went for you know any sponsorships or anything because I like to use the gear that I like to use. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really like to be locked into one yeah. particular um, type of thing. But I would like to give you know just a little shout out to my coach, who's been my coach for. Um, since I was raw, um, so at least six years now, his name is Bob Clark. Um, he has an Instagram. It's break free, break free samurai, um, on Instagram break free. and he, also, he does coaching. He's amazing. He has, he, he analyzes every single lift and the patterns of what I've done in training over the years to determine you know, what my next program is going to look like. He's so smart. Um, and then Jamie Mata out of Fairhaven Fitness. He, it's nice. because of him that I actually ended up getting in this shirt um, uh, because he had done a meet at my gym a few months ago in the Unlimited shirt, and he let me try it on. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I got I to gotta get one of these. This is fun. And he was like, you can just borrow mine. I was like, I'm not taking your shirt, Jamie. And so I ordered my own, but he taught me, you know, I would send them videos and, and he was at the meet that day. It was his meet that he let me jump into. Um, he's helped me with deadlift bench, any, I'll, I'll drive three hours up there to, you know, go get help from him. He's so technical and he has such a good eye. And if you watch the video of my, uh, bench, you can hear him with all the cues you know, it's basically okay. like he's benching it. I'm just doing what he says. Right. So, right, right. so it's M O M O T T A. Jamie Mata. M A T T A. M A T T A. Does he have an yeah. Instagram? Because I could put it all in the, it's, in the description. Um, I think it's Fairhaven Fitness. Fairhaven One Fitness. Word. Okay. Fair yeah. Haven Fitness, and I could. I'll make sure that all that is in the Instagram. I mean, in the description. Awesome. Um, and um, yeah, and anybody listening, obviously. Uh, could hear it, not a problem. And uh, listen, it is it is an it was a pleasure, and it's an it's a it's an honor and a privilege to interview you because um, you are a world champ, and I am well, a, I am some schmuck with a with a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I did check out your I did check out your YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. Oh, did you to. did you check what what did you like? Anything I watched your, I watched your interview with Rita, and which, then I which one? I did like the, three of them. The last one that yeah, after when she was the, the com last yeah. competition that she did. Okay. okay. Um, I can't remember a couple of other ones. So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you looked at it. I'm glad uh, I, you like it because I try to, <laughs> you know, what's funny is I was, I don't know who I was talking to, but I was like, I have nothing for, for women. I, I, there is nothing on my YouTube channel for women. And I didn't do the, I didn't design that way. It was just like, what am I interested in? What do I want to talk about? Oh, body. Right. Body. Bodybuilding, powerlifting, arm wrestling, uh, gangsters, drug dealers, porno stars. Perfect. <laughs> porno stars and drug yeah. dealers. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I need to scroll down. I want to go to the explicit section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I wanna, uh, you'll, I'm telling you. There's, well, there's one that's on there that's free. And she was okay. a porno girl, but it was a legitimate interview. Like, Because she's been doing it for years and years and years. And she, it's a legitimate interview about the background of the industry and so on and so forth. And that sounds pretty interesting. It is. It, it's re it really is interesting. And it did get a lot of views. It got like almost 2,000 views or so on and so forth. I mean, a lot for me. No, you know. Um, <laughs> but then I have the ones that are just fun. And those are the ones that go on the explicit, go on Patreon. Because, you know, I'm not asking them anything. I'm asking them how many boob jobs they got. I'm not asking them anything serious. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the other one, um, I, I asked her so many interesting questions and we got so far in, into it and it was actually turned out to be a really really good interview I'll, I'll send it to you so you can check it out i love watching shit like that like even documentaries on tv oh, of yeah. like real life yeah because you know you you don't you don't realize what the behind the scenes especially something like that that it's just for your pleasure to watch but what goes into it is is tremendous and then not only what goes into it but also what i try to ask her about the bad and the good you know the the drug life, the culture, the uh, the the um, the girls that um, that 
regret it and so on and so forth. And we really kind of got into it a lot. And it was, mm. it was really interesting. It was really, really interesting. I'll send it to you. But okay. about 90, no, I would say 70% of my stuff is bodybuilding, powerlifting, arm wrestling. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. <clears throat> and once again, really an honor and a privilege. And if you break your own record again in October, I'm, def- I'm going to reach out to you again and ask you <laughs> okay. to come back. <laughs> All right. I look forward to it. All right. Sounds good. I, again, really, uh, congratulations. And thank you. Best of luck to you and much love and much respect to you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Have a great thank night. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Okay. All right. Good night. I'll see you in October. Definitely. Okay. <laughs>